Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers, it's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants update video. As you can see, I have finally cut my hair after like a year, shaved a little bit, and I look weird, I admit. It's gonna take some time for me to get used to this look, my hair's gonna grow back, I kinda want my hair to grow back immediately, but it was time to cut the hair. But more importantly, it is football time, man. Last week, we had the Hall of Fame game. And this week, this Thursday, we got the first Giants preseason game. I believe we're going to be matched up against the New England Patriots. Uh, we got, I want to say training camp is just one more or two more weeks. I could be wrong. I actually got to check up on that. I will be attending training camp once again. Uh, and it will be once again on Tuesday. So that is tomorrow. I'll be heading over there with Alex from Big Blue in the Bronx again. It was a pretty good time when I was there last time. Unfortunately, did not get to see a padded practice. Hopefully, I got to see a padded practice. And then I could come and give you guys my first-hand thoughts um, that same night on the call-in show. But what I'm going to talk about today, and this, I'm going to be getting a lot of quotes uh, from this New York Post article by Ryan Dunleavy, is what Brian Dable had to say about that first preseason game and the fact that nobody is going to rest, uh, quote-unquote, is what he said. Basically, we're going to see our starters play in the first preseason game you know now the new preseason format since the nfl has what is it 17 games now um is it's three preseason games instead of four usually and in, this wasn't for every team it was just for a good amount of teams back in the four preseason days you'd see like the starters take the field i want to say in game three for like about half the game or so i have no idea what the with the new format what coaches are doing with their starting players and whatnot but we'll get an idea here with Brian Dayball, of course, in 2020, there was no preseason because of COVID. And then last year, 2021, well, Joe Judge made what ended up being a pretty bad decision. Uh, we didn't see really any of our starters in the 2021 uh, preseason. And those first four games of the season, I remember even myself saying, you know, fans and other people were trying to rationalize why Judge made this decision. We were all trying to say those first four games of the regular season were basically the preseason. And once again, it turned out to be a, a pretty bad move. You know, we ended up having what was a very underwhelming and bad year for the New York Giants. But we will be seeing some action out of our starters this game, this week. And before I get into the quotes, I do want to say, of course, it is going to be a vanilla playbook for both the offensive and defensive sides of the ball. But what you do get to see uh, with the defense, for example, is how they tackle, how they approach tackling, what, um, you know, how fast their uh, thinking is on the field. Can the linebackers dissect plays properly from the opposing side? You know, can Xavier McKinney really, you know, jump in front of a ball with the right anticipation? Is he still a tackling monster? Stuff like that, you could tell. Not necessarily, you don't have to have the full scheme in place. And then on the offensive side, the ball route running, you know, you'd want to see which wide receivers need to do a little bit more work with it, which ones don't. Saquon Barkley, who, by the way, man, Saquon has looked amazing. And this is me talking from seeing him in person last Tuesday and then from stuff I've read and highlights I've seen on Twitter. He looks amazing, man. He's back. Knock on wood. He needs to stay healthy, but but he's back. You know, so you want to see how Saquon's running. You know, you want to see how the offensive line is blocking, which is still a little bit of a worry. And then with Daniel Jones, you know, once again, kind of a uh, vanilla type of playbook. But you'll still be able to see is he reading plays the way he should be reading plays. Is he scanning the field properly and whatnot. These are things you can see during preseason whether or not you know there's a full scheme involved that being said let me get into the quotes once again shout out to the post and ryan dunleavy this is what uh they will said i anticipate all of our guys playing on thursday in the preseason opener against the new york new england patriots first year head coach brian dayball revealed sunday supposedly before even sharing his plan with the team that means there will be no resting healthy starters to safeguard against the possibility of injury Though sitting starters is the norm in the NFL these days. Everybody's in a new offense and defensive systems here. I think it's the most imp that's most important to play football, to have live reps. How many reps that's going to be, I can't tell you right now. I think it's going to be less for some and more for others. And each game will have a plan going into it. Very interesting when he's saying less for some, more for others. I'm wondering if he's just straight up means... Uh, actually, it's going to be a combination. I think it's going to be a combination of guys that have injuries... Maybe he'll take it a little bit less than with them. Although I will say Blake Martinez has had extra reps 
almost like they're trying to speed him up for a season and he's coming off that ACL tear. And of course, it definitely means the learning curve. There's some guys that might not be picking up on these new uh, schemes as quickly as they should be. The quotes continue. There's more sports science. There's more analytics involved, Dayball said. I'd say I'd learn a lot from my time in Buffalo, where they've gotten off to historically fast starts. Very healthy roster. I think Coach McDermott does a good job of getting them ready to go early. And at the end of the day, it's about the players performing under pressure and making the plays when they need to. The intensity, the effort, the energy has been good. We're just going to increase it a little bit relative to the reps or extra conditioning. Um, and I think that was the last quote, uh, this article from Brian Dable to speak on the second to last one when he's talking about sports science and analytics. I know this is for some reason a very controversial topic amongst NFL fans. And it's usually you see an age divide. It's usually you see the older fans say, you know, either it's BS or it doesn't matter or people read too much into it. And it's usually the younger fans that kind of support it. I feel like with everything, there is a middle ground. But in the modern NFL teams that have success, they do have people in uh, not their front offices, but on their staff that are experts in these areas, experts in sports science and definitely in analytics. I know PFF gets a bad rap, including for myself. I don't I don't like PFF being used as like the only tool in the box, so to speak. It's definitely one of the many tools you should use. But they are a great resource and the NFL uses them and NFL teams actually do use them for a reason. I certainly don't understand all about it, which is why I'm not going to get into it. But I'm glad to see that the Giants are now taking steps towards involving those tools when it comes to making their team better because the past couple years not only on the field i made so many jokes with jason garrett's offense being from the 1940s but it just seemed like as an organization we were stuck in the past and we weren't adapting and keeping up with the times and keeping up with what other teams in the nfl have been doing one of the reasons myself and many giants fans were excited to have brian dable on in the first place is because the bills were one of the more front runner teams in the nfl and you saw it reflect on the field you saw it reflect in drafts that's why even as uh, Brian Dable just said it, they get off to a pretty fast start during the regular season. And now I guess I'm just going to shift it towards the players that I'm looking forward to the most seeing on uh, Thursday since we're basically this is all but confirmation that we're going to see starters play. Saquon Barkley already up there. I mentioned him earlier in the video. I really, really think and, and I know I sound like a broken record like probably many of Giants fans do, but I think this is the year. I think Saquon is back, guys. Take it from a guy that went to training camp, saw him live in person. The thing that convinced me, the thing that made me say and it clicked in my mind that this is Saquon in 2018, this is rookie year, is that he trusts his body again. He trusts himself again to make what can be seen as risky plays when recovering from an injury. We all know when you go back and look at some games, Saquon looked like he didn't just trust his legs to take him as fast as he could go to make as deep cuts as he could cut. And when I saw him lay out for a catch late in the practice on last Tuesday and basically risk an injury, I was like, he's confident in himself. He's confident that his body is fully healed. And that means he's going to go all out on the field. And also the fact that he just looks like he's going all out on the field. He looks faster than everybody, which is what we got in 2018. He looks more agile than everybody. He just looks like he's going to be a force on the field. I'm looking forward to also seeing Kayvon Thibodeau. I think we got the best edge rusher in the draft, man. I mean, this guy has looked unstoppable in training camp as well. There's only been like really one person that has consistently put up a fight against him and really consistently stopped him, and that's Andrew Thomas. And I'm not even saying this as a, as a gigantic Andrew Thomas fan that you guys know me to be, but it's literally, it's, it's just been him. And I feel like that's going to be great for both guys. Thomas going up against the fifth overall pick and what is, in my opinion, now the best edge rusher out of the 2022 draft. And Thibodeau going up against what looks... Like, he could be a top 10 tackle in the league. They're going to sharpen each other like iron sharpens iron. But Thibodeau otherwise has looked unstoppable. You know, we've seen him blow through Neil. We've seen him blow through everybody else on the offensive line. I'm looking forward to see Leonard Williams, who's quietly had one of the best training camps and just off seasons in general. He looks leaner. He looks meaner. And he's been wrecking shop up the middle. And that's going to do great things for the entirety of the defense. I'm looking forward to seeing Kadarius Toney um, and Kenny Galladay. Just the wide receiving core in general. There's a lot of people in there that I'm excited to see. Uh, most importantly, I'm just excited to see some football again. You know, and, and it is the preseason. And we're still about a month away from getting some actual live season NFL football. But we're almost there, man. You put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think. Whether it's from Dayball electing to basically have all of our starters play to who you're looking forward to to who you're worried about that's it for now and i'm out
Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.